So we just bought uh, Chapter 7. We got one left. This one's called F Zero Grand Prix, so maybe this is the last one. Hmm. I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. It would certainly feel like it since we spent like 5,000 hours getting here. It's apparently the hardest. Uh, is it? Well, according to that creepy bat or copy <laughs> of creepy pasta. <laughs> I can't, yeah. Man, how's it go? I can't really remember it, but it was really yeah. popular. Yeah. Uh, but it was about chapter 7, I think. 88 miles sure per hell. hour, fucker. Let's go back to the fucking future. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, you get to drive this old jalopy. <laughs> yeah. Here, here we go. Pico. Well, we got some CG models of everyone here. It's pretty cool. Whoa. whoa. I'm racing? Okay. <laughs> Mighty Gazelle. Let's go, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm. <laughs> His head's a spear. Yeah. His know models that. look a little bit different than uh, Batman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Falcon. Where's he? Uh, uh -huh. I bet Black Shadow didn't think he was going to be here after the traps that he laid for him. <laughs> oh my god, you escaped my devious trap. How did you do that? Look at how tall my car is. I know, he gets in this little pod up top. I guess it's to keep him safe from all the danger. <laughs> oh, it's just so he can assert his dominance. <laughs> so he can look down what? on everyone. Oh, well, somebody compensating. <laughs> I don't know what for what though, because he's pretty huge. But his suit is so tight, but there's no visible penis. So maybe, <laughs> like... The way yeah, Captain yeah. Falcon's suit is around his crotch area, it looks like he could have a penis. <laughs> like, it's like, it's got some folds there and some yeah. furls. Like, a well, leather. But, that's uh, important. But Black Shadow is completely tight everywhere. That's a that's an important aspect of character design. Yeah. Mm. Make it look like it's possible for him to have a penis. Yeah, I know. Ah, that's lava. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> lava and bombs. Oh my god, what's this stage like, I wonder? Oh god. Lava everywhere! Here. Holy shit! This Black Shadow's evil trick: make lava appear everywhere. His dirty scams. He's up to again. Look, there's no guardrail. Oh yeah! Whoa! Whoa! Oh. That that dirty whore! Oh man! Black Look. Shadow, what has he done? People are attacking me. This rotten assault on our person. He's an affront to God. That dumbass. You better kill him. You better go like Shadow the Hedgehog on his oh, ass at shit. the end and shoot him. And then have a, then have a cut to black. Credits. Yeah. <laughs> Captain Falcon. <laughs> Captain Falcon should take out his little pistol he has there that he never <laughs> uses. And just uh -huh. shoot Black Shadow and that'll be the end of him. Yeah. And then it just starts playing his theme song. <laughs> at the credits. <laughs> Never again, Black Shadow. <laughs> Not today, Black Shadow. And then, like, in the next game, you have to play as uh, Punish Captain Falcon. And he's, <laughs> he's, like, distraught for having killed Black Shadow because he finds out that he was really his brother. Uh -huh. He has a manly tears moment. Now he cares, yeah. No! <laughs> What have I done? And he realizes he was right all along. Why are you burying his body, Captain Falcon? Because we love the same woman. <laughs> He's the hero we deserved. <laughs> just, we just we didn't know it at the time. <laughs> Black Shadow. We love the same woman. America. <laughs> now get out of my country. This isn't even Earth. Everywhere belongs to America. <laughs> Home is where the heart is. Oh, oh damn. You might have to concentrate on surviving, and then you have to learn how to win. <laughs> this is a good story mode. Lots of uh, original content. Yeah, you get some original tracks, some story cutscenes that all look pretty good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get some challenge, and it relies on you playing the Grand Prix now and then to get tickets. So it's interwoven with the Grand Prix. Yeah. So it ensures that you're getting training. It's 
Well done. Yeah. yeah. More racing games should do this. Have like a big story mode where you have to play the normal Grand Prix to get tickets. So it fuses it into the game so it doesn't feel like it's a separate thing. Mm -hmm. It's like what you can imagine Captain Falcon actually doing maybe. Like just racing and then... Did you see that? Those yeah. people just swerving around the bombs? Yeah, you know, they're just cheating. As if they didn't even exist. Well, you gotta stay away from the ice. Or whatever that is. Electro ice. <laughs> Slippery metal. I don't know how it works. You're floating. Yeah. Why, does, why do you slip on something? Yeah. Uh -huh. Is it just a magnet that deflects you or something? It's a magnet with more friction. <laughs> or less friction. I can see how the lava might hurt you because it's hot, but... Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure how it could get any hotter than the inside of your car. Yeah. See that white light coming up back there? The color of light is indicative of the heat. Uh-huh. Like a white star is incredibly hot. Oh shit. Oh, no. It's as simple as that. If you were that crazy game nerd guy, the guy that plays F-Zero on YouTube, mm -hmm. you could probably come back from that by just, like, jiggling up and down to get lift and come all the way back onto the stage. Yeah. That guy goes all the way off the stage and flies away and then comes back <laughs> using lift. Just, like, uh -huh. keep flapping your oh, car shit. like a... Like, <laughs> there's a way to make you go really far <laughs> like mm -hmm. that. It's really weird. Whoops, I went to settings. Oh, well. Let's take it easy. You can do it fag mode then, I guess. Yeah. We're easy going F Zero today. Mm -hmm. Easy goingness. There should be a Kirby Air Ride mode <laughs> where it takes everything out of it by pressing A now and then. Uh -huh. More games need like. A difficulty setting that goes from uh, the easiest being barely interactive to the hardest being the hardest thing imaginable. <laughs> like, so uh -huh. you get everything in one game. Yeah. <laughs> just didn't. That guy was just grinding his car at me, and I didn't even care. I couldn't afford to move. Uh, I know MGS2 is a little bit like that with his difficulty settings. Oh, like, yeah. very easy. You barely have to play. Like, everyone basically dies in one shot. Mm -hmm. You can't really die from anything. And then, uh, if you go up to European Extreme, like, everything one-shots you. If you get caught, it's game over. Mm -hmm. And bosses are just out of control. <laughs> How much health they have. Yeah. Like, I kind of, uh, like... Uh, super easy difficulty settings are kind of amusing, but I never use them. Yeah. Under any circumstance. Um. Oh, damn it. In, uh, Metal Gear Solid 2, um. Uh. You went to settings again, though. Yeah, I know. Intentional. Um, it was intentional. Okay. Uh. At a certain point in the game, Raiden needs to fight a number of Metal Gear Rays. Mm -hmm. And it depends on your difficulty setting. And, uh. Oh, yeah. On, like, extreme and up, you have to fight, like, 30 Metal Gear Rays. Mm -hmm. And they can all one-shot you. But how much on the easiest difficulty? Oh. oh, it goes down to, like, three or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, wow. it's crazy. Last time I did it, I did it on very hard. And I think I had to kill, like, uh, 24 or something? I don't know. Mm -hmm. But it was really bad. Like... You have to get really good at just spot dodging all the missiles and stuff. Yeah. It's really weird. In uh, It's not like a stealth game. <laughs> In Rising 2, they should really make you fight uh, uh, 30 General Arm... or Senator G Armstrong. Sen General Armstrong. He'd be General Armstrong by then. Yeah, um... Man, what's Raiden's problem with Metal Gear Rays? Like, <laughs> he fought like... Depending on your difficulty, like up to 30 mm -hmm. in MGS2, and then he fights them again. First thing he has to do in Metal Gear Rising. It's like, well, here we go. Yeah. Fight this thing again. He must be so good at it. <laughs> he hates them he, so much. Well, look at what happens in the game. He just walks up and 
cuts them yeah. until they just dissipate. <laughs> yeah. Well, more rays today, I guess. <laughs> and Whatever. Uh, in MGS4, in a, in a cutscene anyway, you just like, you need some health back. Oh. Uh, there's nothing yeah. I can do. In MGS4, I, like, I have he to just, not dash, not boost. He just slaughters a number of uh, geckos. Oh, yeah. In a cutscene, like, and they're metal gear, they're metal gears of some type. Mm -hmm. But they're called geckos, I don't know why. Those uh, small metal gears with a whole shitload of them. Yeah. Seems like the better idea. They're called geckos. They don't look like any. No. They look. They have horse legs or something. Yeah, they, and uh, they move sound like cows. Yeah, they sound like cows. To it's a, a form of psychological warfare. <laughs> it's supposed to freak you out. Yeah. Ugh. And it does. <laughs> yeah, they are really scary in game because they're walking around amongst people, and uh, if you knock them over, they'll. Uh, spin their body around on the axis between their legs so oh, they'll yeah. like flip all the way around you can see the muscles spin around like wrong oh, so yeah. it's like if you uh fell forward and uh your head was on the ground but your legs were up straight and instead of standing up forward you just kept moving your head between your legs until you turned backwards the other way and then flip back up without actually bending your neck back. Mm -hmm. You just kept going oh, shit. You kept going forward until you just came back up. Mm -hmm. Ugh, that's what they do. <laughs> they are pretty freaky. I, I recently replayed MGS4 and never realized how scared I was of them. Still. Uh, man, these guys are fighting each other. Successfully. Yeah. I don't know how I'm supposed to... I, I don't feel like I fit in. <laughs> I don't fit in through. I keep vibrating my controller. I'm, I'm almost at like a third health down already. I don't know how I'm gonna even survive. See, this is the this is the first map where I uh, regularly die by losing health. Yeah. You know the frame rate in MGS4 is really bad. Oh yeah. I just re-noticed it when I went to back and play it. It was just awful. Hmm. It's like sub 20 in some spots. Wow. It's not acceptable. A surprising amount of games, uh, you know, just went back to crappy frame rates yeah. at that time. But MGS5 uh, is a uh, rock solid 30. Like oh, it yeah. never drops below 30. Uh -huh. So that's good, but... Well, that's what you want when you're going to resort to 30. Yeah, it'll be better... You don't want it below 30. That's yeah. unacceptable. If, when I re-get it on PC, it'll be good to have unlocked 60, so... Uh -huh. But whatever. Oh. It's really... has a strong frame rate on uh, PS4, anyway. Mm -hmm. And it runs at 1080p. Yeah. Um... It runs at 900 on the Xbox One. Who oh, yeah. started all this shit anyway? With the strange in-between resolutions? Yeah. Who the hell ever heard of 900 until now? I mean, just started screwing up. <laughs> like, they evolved to 1080 and then they went backwards. Uh, 900? Oh, damn. Like, Final Fantasy 15 on the Xbox One is probably going to run at, like, uh... Like a eight forty, like what? Eight forty? Eight forty one? What the heck? And it's gonna be permanently letterboxed. Mm -hmm. I hate, <laughs> I hate how, uh, like I got a laptop recently that with a resolution of, uh, wait, I think it was like, uh, thirteen sixty six by seven six eight. Okay. Like, I, I kind of wish... I mean, I know it's higher than 720, but I wish it was just 720. Oh, yeah. Cause then it would be pixel perfect when trying to watch video. Mm. But, you know, it's... The laptops always have those weird uh, resolutions. Sometimes they're not uh, 16 by 9, too. Uh, Thank God they stopped that. Yeah, yeah. 
that's one thing you really got to try to get to 16 by 9 these days. Um, no, I mean like they're wider than 16 by 9. Yeah, even is, that's just wrong. Just jarring, yeah. Don't do that. Um, 16 by 10. I mean, uh, what? what's the point of that when you're mostly reading text? I don't know. It's like... Um, yeah, and I know one thing. Pretty excited. You're 29. I'm pretty excited. I can't do anything. I can't. I can't boost because I go too slow, or I keep hitting people and losing health. I'm pretty excited for Final Fantasy 15. It's gonna be good. Oh yeah, it's gonna be all right, baby. It's gonna be pretty good, supposedly. It's like, it's gonna be amazing, possibly. This year is already a write-off. The last thing I have left to get is um, Xenoblade Chronicles X. I can't afford this guy a five right now, but mm. I'm gonna try to get Xenoblade Chronicles X, and if that's not good, I'm just this year is just gonna be a wash. This year is just gonna be like dark matter, <laughs> like awful, because this year sucked for me anyway. Because I don't care about Fallout, and I didn't care about Witcher Three. Oh yeah. So all that was left for me was MGS Five and Xenoblade Chronicles X. Uh-huh. And MGS5 turned out to be unfinished, and the Xenoblade Chronicles X mm -hmm. looks like it's going to be censored to hell and back. I don't, like, I don't really know what I'm looking forward to, and I don't really care, because I just want to get a PS4 at some point. Why don't you just go get one now, before well, you go home? Well, because I have Bayonetta to beat. I have to do it. Wait like for the PS4 port. <laughs> Sucks on you. I was waiting for the port. I waited 12 years. I knew better than to buy Metroid Prime on the GameCube. <laughs> I knew it was going to come out on the Wii U. Uh -huh. <laughs> All those years later in a collection. For the, the trilogy. I was waiting for the 3DS Bloodborne port. No, the 2DS exclusive Bloodborne port. I'm waiting for the HD remaster on the PS5. Hmm. Come on, guys. It's only going to be twenty nine ninety nine. dollars No, I'm... You know what I'm doing? Uh, I'm investing in Star Citizen ships so I can get enough money for, uh, like, a whole bunch of new consoles. Mm. I heard people were doing that. Yeah. Like, that, that is such a risk. That's I know. People, uh, people are into that game for tens of thousands of dollars. Mm-hmm. Right, they're invested, and um, as soon as anything bad happens with the game, like uh, in terms of uh, PR, they immediately defend it in such a way. It just it sounds like they're in jail or something, and they like it. <laughs> like it's like uh, there was a few people saying uh, they were they kept donating to Star Citizen, and they didn't care if it came out because they just wanted to help the Star Citizen dev team with their artistic endeavors. Yeah. So weird. They're considering themselves a patron, uh -huh. but that's not how that works. You bought something. Yeah. God, I hate all this crap where people are seriously thinking that. Oh no! Oh, right before the that, script. it's okay to just pay as a patron. Dump money and stuff. People who cannot produce a product that can stand on its own. Mm -hmm. Like, it's like having a tax that runs a museum in the middle of nowhere. Which happens that yeah. that can never stand financially on its own. Mm -hmm. Like, what's the point? No one would agree to their money being spent on it. But yet, people on the internet are so backwards. They're like, uh, I'm, I'm just gonna pay uh, these guys because I don't care if the game comes out, but I like what they're doing. I like the message. <laughs> they're making games about being someone who uses a vacuum cleaner wh while things happen in the world outside and they hear it on the news. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh... Like, I wonder... I wonder if people are gonna make money on, on ships, like, investing in ships. In I don't know. I know there's a mining... Digital content. There's a mining ship that some people are buying, uh, the Orion. Yeah. And it's this gigantic mining ship thing. And uh, people what? are already what? like, huh? the game is not even nearly out. 
and people are already trying to decide what to spend their time on when they get the game. And p- there's people invested in mining, mm-hmm. and they're like, I'm going to be a miner, and I'm dead set on it, and I'm already in for four grand. So I'm going I'm to do it, mm-hmm. and I'm going to make money mining these rocks. Yeah. And uh, at CitizenCon, they had a cinematic trailer for the game where they revealed all their actors. Oh, yeah. And uh, they got, like, uh, Gary Oldman <laughs> and these big-name actors mm-hmm. acting in this, and they probably have no idea what's going on. They're like, well, it's a paycheck. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if this it's is. It's a very large paycheck. And if I this will really... ever come out, I don't know. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's it's pretty... It's a it's a interesting thing all around the game. Like, it used to... It used to be the case that it was just an a, like an interesting project, like one a, like a new um, a new game in an underused uh, genre. Yeah. And then it just became this big money well. Yeah, like it, at CitizenCon, the people that are there, it's just like going to another country. It's like they stir a citizen to them is like someone created another world. And they're like, yeah, man, I can't wait to move in. And they're all waiting. They got their spot in line. And they're all waiting to move into Star Citizen. It's very hard to explain the mentality at oh Citizen God. Gone. Oh, this is impossible. Except it isn't. Because it's <laughs> in the game. 